Welcome back to America. We're here with Robert Greenway, former National Security Council Senior Director under President Trump. Robert Greenway, there's an ideology behind all this. Uh, and I don't think the American people are aware, in my view, that they're being sold out by this president, his personnel, and the Democrat Party. Can you tell us about this ideology? I think as best I can, the idea really uh, is derived among those on the left-hand side of the political spectrum, and it's the approach to Palestine where this, uh, this essentially grew out of. And the idea was that in order to get to equilibrium, we had to reduce Israel's influence and its strength of its position and increase the Palestinian position relative to it. And the thought was that that would bring you to a negotiated settlement. That same idea was translated to the Iranian problem. And so what essentially you see is in, a, in an effort to increase Iran's position and to decrease Israel and the rest of our partners and allies in the region relative to Iran so that you would get to equilibrium. And the benefit theoretically of this is that the U.S. wouldn't have to be present. You would have a natural balance of power that would be sustainable and we wouldn't have to be involved. The idea is something that in theory, I guess, would work in a graduate school environment, but it certainly doesn't work in the Middle East. And that is, I think, what's behind both approaches to the Israel-Palestine question and to the Iran question in the Middle East. And we're seeing the consequences of this idea now borne out in real time, and it's not pretty. Don't these people understand what terrorism means? It means they're not interested in negotiating unless it's for um, their purposes so they can attack again in the future. You're not dealing with... I mean, here's a piece by Obama, Thoughts on Israel and Gaza, which underscores your point. Here's another one by Ben Rhodes, the former Deputy National Security Council, uh, under under Obama and really disaster, saying the same thing. Here's another one by Thomas Friedman, saying the same thing. Israel's about to make a terrible mistake. Israel's about to take a, make a terrible mistake. Is, so based on what you're saying, that ideology is, Israel must not obliterate Hamas. And when they talk about expanding the war in the Middle East, they're not talking about Israel needs to protect itself by not expanding the war in the Middle East, which I guess means don't defend yourself. What they're saying is defend our ideology and defend our policies. And isn't that another reason why they're soft on Iran, even in their rhetoric? It is. And there's a remarkable consistency on the domestic approach and on the foreign policy approach. It is a sympathy for the perpetrator and an antipathy for the victim. So we're always trying to find out why the victim's responsible for, for a circumstance, in this case, Israel. And we're trying to support and find justification for the perpetrators, in this case, Hamas and really Iran, because it's a wholly owned franchise. And that applies in the United States in their approach to domestic policy and law enforcement and security on the southern border. And in this case, it applies to, to, to national security and foreign policy in the Middle East. And you get the same results. It's horrific in both cases. Now, you were intimately involved in the discussions that led to the Abraham Accords supporting President Trump. President Trump was a fantastic president. I mean, the Middle East was at peace. There was peace breaking out between Israel and five or six of its Arab slash Muslim uh, uh, neighbors. Uh, Saudi Arabia, it looked like, was about to join the group, so forth. You had Iran in a box. You had the Palestinian terrorists in a box, Hezbollah in a box. Um, and then the Biden crowd comes in and blows it all up. Isn't this another reason why the likes of a Thomas Friedman and Ben Rhodes and the others continuously trash Trump and his policies, but also continuously trash Benjamin Netanyahu, who dared to stand up to them, who dared to oppose their, their, uh, their, their negotiations with Iran and so forth? They hated Trump and they hate Netanyahu, no? 100%. It couldn't have been more obvious, uh, the delay in calling him when he won the election, the refusal to host him in the White House. They were reluctant to meet him, even New York, during the General Assembly. And now, of course, we're in conflict. There's no question that, that, that on the left, there's an ideological predisposition against it. And unfortunately, they've manufactured a fantasy in, that includes the Middle East. They've furnished it. They're living in it. Uh, and they'd like everyone to join them. And unfortunately, circumstances have really collapsed around them. And they're left to confront the reality that their policies haven't worked. Instead of reversing course, it seems like they're committed now to constrain Israel even further uh, and prevent them from doing what's necessary to live securely. And at the same time, we have not stopped with providing resources to Tehran, which only translates into increased threat. And the Iranian foreign minister is strolling around New York City where Jewish students and Cooper Union can't do it to go to class. But here, the Iranian foreign minister, the party behind all of this that funds trips, 
uh, equips, trains, arms this particular terrorist group and a host of others is, is invited to the United States with open arms. It's absurd. Two questions, very simple answers. Donald Trump was, in fact, the greatest president to, to ever support Israel. Is that not true? There's no question about it. Donald Trump is also the greatest president to fight terrorism and terrorist regimes in the Middle East. Isn't that also true? That's uh, absolutely right. You can ask uh, Baghdadi and you can ask Qasem Soleimani, but neither are available for comment. And of course, he doesn't get any kind of international prizes. He doesn't get any positive recognition in our own media. Instead, they want to put him in prison for the rest of his life. It is absolutely sickening. Well, I want to thank you, sir, for your contribution to peace and truth. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. Thanks for having me, Mark. Appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.